Hi, this is George Arrington, and I'd like to do a proof from geometry. First, let's talk about the strategy of doing geometric proofs. Oftentimes, students have trouble with proofs because they try to rush into it and, and just start writing down steps in their table of statements and reasons without actually thinking through the proof. So it's my recommendation that you plan out your, your, the steps of your proof on scratch paper and then uh, organize them into the table that you, uh, that you have. So let's look at a very interesting proof. By the way, this, this uh, proof I'm going to show you is, uh, is a real stumper for a lot of uh, students and for teachers. So let's take a look at it. So here's, this, here's the proposition. If you take a trapezoid and you inscribe it into a circle, then that trapezoid has to be an isosceles trapezoid. So how can this be proven? First off, let's, let's define a couple of things. Uh, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral that is a four-sided polygon, a four-sided figure with one pair of sides opposite one another that are parallel to each other. That looks like this. These two sides with the red arrows are the parallel sides. They're called the upper and lower base. The other two sides are not necessarily equal in length. They're not necessarily congruent, as we say. And uh, so that's why I have one tick mark on one side and two tick marks on the other side. And these non-parallel sides of a trapezoid are called the legs of the trapezoid. And one other definition is that an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid with congruent legs, just like an isosceles triangle is a triangle with two congruent sides. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid with congruent legs. That might look something like this. You have the upper lower base that are parallel to each other, but now the legs are of the same length. In other words, they're congruent. So let's take a circle and let's inscribe a trapezoid into it. Now, to inscribe a polygon into a circle means that the points of the polygon are touching the circle on the inside. So here the trapezoid, the four points of the trapezoid, the, the four vertices, vertices of the trapezoid are touching the circle. And let's put some labels on this so we can, we can talk about it. The uh, circle we'll call circle O, so there's the center of the circle, and we'll call that point O, that defines the circle, has a particular radius. And then the trapezoid will label A, B, C, D, like that. Okay, so what do we know about this picture? So we're given this picture, we know that it's a trapezoid. We know that since it is a trapezoid, the bases must be parallel. That's one of the... Uh, parts are the definitions of the trapezoid. That means that in this picture, AB is parallel to DC. So how do we approach the problem? Of course, this is the, this is the, the key question when, when doing a uh, geometric proof. Where do we go from here? Okay, so in this, in this problem, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line segment from A to C. You can always draw line segments uh, on a figure uh, to help prove something. So here in this blue line I've drawn is from A to C. Now, since AB and DC are parallel to one another, we can consider that this AC is a transversal. And since we know that for parallel lines cut by such a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent. That is, angle ACD is congruent to angle CAB. 
and those are shown here in red. Now the other thing about this picture is that the two angles that are shown there uh, ACD and CAB are inscribed angles. That means that the, their vertices are on the circle and they cut out a particular arc. Now one property of these is if the inscribed angles are congruent then the subtended arcs that they cut out are also congruent. That is, arc AD is congruent to arc BC. That means that their angular measure is the same. Now, and, uh, and they're shown there in green. Since these arcs are congruent, the subtended chords are also congruent. That is, line segment AD and line segment BC are congruent to one another. And they're shown there in red. Well, if that's true, then these, note that these are also the legs of the trapezoid. And therefore, the trapezoid itself must be an isosceles trapezoid. So now let's put the, once we, ha, once we have all of the steps, we can organize them into a table in, uh, in the statement reason form that we are familiar with. So the first statement is this, trapezoid A, B, C, D is inscribed in circle O. The reason for that is, well, that's the given information. That's what we're starting with. Statement number two, draw segment AC. The reason for this is often given as construction. We can do that for any, for any figure. We can draw additional auxiliary lines. The third step is that segment AB is parallel to DC. Now the reason for that is that this is a property of the trapezoid that the that the bases of a trapezoid are parallel to one another. The fourth step is that triangle ACD and try and angle, excuse me, the angle ACD is parallel to, let me start over, sorry. Uh, angle ACD is congruent to angle CAB. And the reason for that is that these are alternate interior angles uh, of, a, of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Step five is that ACD, angle ACD and angle CAB are inscribed angles. And the reason is that their vertices and endpoints lie on the circle. So knowing that, arc AD is congruent to arc BC because congruent inscribed angles create congruent arcs. Step seven says then line segment AD is congruent to li line segment BC because chords subtended by congruent arcs are congruent. Then finally, the three dots there meaning therefore, trapezoid ABCD is isosceles. And the reason is a trapezoid with congruent legs is isosceles. QED, that's Latin for quad erat demonstrantum, which means that which was to be proven or demonstrated. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I thank you for watching.